The year is 1975, and one of the greatest bodybuilders of all time, Arnold Schwarzenegger, is seen smoking a joint directly after his sixth Mr. Olympia victory. He later went on to admit that he did in fact smoke marijuana in the 70s, and that raises the question, how could someone that was so dominant in bodybuilding, a sport that requires you to get to ridiculously low levels of body fat while packing on pound after pound of muscle, how could he win seven Mr. Olympias while using a substance stereotypically associated with making people fat and lazy? Well, as marijuana legalization efforts grow, and with many states already allowing recreational marijuana use, more and more people wonder how weed can affect their weight, body fat percentage, muscle mass, and their overall results that they see from exercise. So today I wanna to give you guys a non-biased science-based review of marijuana and how exactly it can help or hurt your muscle building and fat loss goals. First of all, it's important to understand that marijuana was originally made illegal not because of any proven harmful effects, but instead it was done to suppress certain minority groups and to snuff out competition between the wood industry and the hemp industry. And in case you don't know, hemp is the plant that grows marijuana. Back in the early to mid 1900s, it was clear that hemp could be used to make all the things that lumber could be used for, except industrial hemp was lighter, stronger, and less expensive than wood. So since it posed a serious threat, a smear campaign was created against marijuana that eventually led to it being criminalized. Since then, it's gone from being extremely demonized to actually having applicable medical uses today. For example, it's now commonly used to treat cancer patients, to help them relieve nausea and pain, and to counteract a lack of appetite. There are also studies that show that marijuana can slow the growth of tumors like pancreatic cancer cells, for example. When taking a closer look, we find that marijuana contains a chemical known as THC, which is responsible for most of the physiological effects that produce the high, as well as the increased appetite that causes the so-called munchies or excessive snacking. Another major cannabinoid is known as CBD, which has been found to have medicinal value for controlling epilepsy and other neurological disorders, and there's evidence to suggest that it could even be effective at reducing inflammation. But even though marijuana clearly has some medical benefits, many doctors and researchers still consider marijuana to potentially be harmful for your health. For example, researchers found that smoking three to four cannabis cigarettes per day could lead to similar risks with respiratory issues as what's seen in people regularly smoking over 20 tobacco cigarettes per day. Of course, there are many studies that don't support this view on marijuana being as bad as tobacco. Some studies have shown that marijuana could even improve how strong the lungs are and the lung capacity as well. So this is a highly debated issue that we won't have answers to until scientists are more able to freely conduct experiments and research on marijuana. With all that said, that doesn't change the fact that some athletes do indeed use it and many believe it provides performance enhancing effects. For example, one study on French student athletes found that 17.8% of the females and almost 40% of the males had used cannabis more than 10 times over the course of 30 days. This may have to do with the fact that many athletes often claim that marijuana helps them focus and concentrate better. Some athletes also believe that it has a relaxing effect that could help reduce stress and possibly assist with recovery. It might help with recovery because marijuana is a vasodilator, which means that it can widen your arteries and improve blood flow, which can help reduce soreness. There's also a common belief shared by runners that smoking marijuana before their run helps enhance the runner's high, which is a feeling of euphoria that's experienced after a couple minutes of running, and for a long time, it's always been associated with a release of endorphins. However, research now shows that endorphins may not be able to reach the brain, so it may be more likely that endocannabinoids are the mechanism that leads to that runner's high, and that may be why marijuana amplifies its effect. There are also other claims about marijuana where athletes say that it helps them get in the zone and due to its pain reducing effects, some athletes believe that it helps them push through that burning sensation felt throughout the body during a workout. However, science doesn't fully agree that the physiological effects that lead to improved focus, concentration, and relaxation come without their share of negative side effects. For example, research on cyclists found that smoking a cigarette with 1.7% THC, which is much lower than the amount that's regularly found in a joint, but even that small amount reduced maximal power output for the cyclist significantly compared to those that did not smoke that small amount of THC. 
On top of that, research also shows that marijuana can distort perception, coordination, and cognition, which not only impairs performance, but may also increase the risk of injuries when using heavy weights. Now, combine that with the fact that marijuana can increase your pain threshold, like I just said, and it becomes pretty clear that smoking before a heavy lifting session isn't necessarily the best thing for injury prevention. With that said, it's important to note that the loss of coordination highly depends on the dose and your tolerance. So either having a really high tolerance or smoking only a small amount of marijuana may not be as detrimental to your coordination, cognition, and performance. But even with that taken into account, we still have more studies that suggest that THC can significantly reduce many performance measures like balance, reaction speed, and psychomotor performance, which is essentially the coordination of your conscious cognitive processing and your physical movement. Now, specifically in regard to muscle growth, there are definitely some interesting pros and cons. Unfortunately, there are no direct studies on how marijuana impacts muscle growth, but some studies do show that the THC from marijuana can impair testosterone production. One study found testosterone levels were 56% lower among men who used marijuana at least four days a week for at least six months compared to those who had never used it at all. The good news is that even though most studies show a drop in testosterone, some studies suggest the effect isn't all that significant. One study even found that there were absolutely no statistically significant changes to testosterone levels during and after the smoking period as compared with the pre-smoking baseline levels. Also, even if your testosterone levels do in fact drop, the effects are definitely not permanent. Testosterone levels tend to return to normal after around just 24 hours of not smoking marijuana. Of course, other than testosterone, there may be other hormones that get affected. For example, research has shown that smoking about two average sized joints for 14 days led to three times less human growth hormone production. Again, this doesn't directly mean that you can't build muscle just because you smoke marijuana, because in general, researchers have questioned whether growth hormone has that much of a significant effect on muscle growth to begin with. And some studies suggest that the effects of growth hormone on muscle growth are over exaggerated. So the point is, even if you do experience a reduction in growth hormone, that reduction may not hurt muscle growth. And regardless, marijuana is not likely to have a significant impact on muscle, especially in non-heavy smokers, since the effects are dose dependent and quickly reversible. There is a possibility that it can impair muscle growth more for heavy smokers simply because they're consuming more of it, but some research shows that that's also unlikely because the testosterone suppressing effect effects become less significant as you develop more of a tolerance through heavy use. This is similar to what I was saying before, where even if you do smoke a lot, if you have a high tolerance, you may not have your performance impaired by much, and you might not experience such negative effects with your coordination, your cognition, and your power output, while still feeling a sense of relaxation, concentration, and focus. Also out of everything, the definitive most positive thing that you could say about marijuana when it comes to muscle growth is that it increases appetite, which can help you eat more food. This can be useful for certain people that struggle to eat enough to put on weight or for those that experience nausea from the amount of food that you have to sometimes eat to bulk up. In fact, one study found that smoking marijuana increased total daily calorie intake by 40%, which is obviously quite a lot, but unfortunately, that was mainly due to snacking. And even though you probably already know this, Cheez-Its and ice cream won't really help you build muscle anywhere near as much as they'll help you gain fat. And that's actually the other side of the spectrum. What happens to people that are looking to burn fat and lose weight? Sure, an increase in appetite can be beneficial for people that have a hard time consuming enough calories, but the downside is that if you get the munchies, you can easily overeat and gain body fat. If you're trying to lose weight and you're limiting your calorie intake, then you're already hungry, trying to resist cravings. And so when you smoke weed, you would think that you would be a lot more likely to binge. But the interesting thing is that it seems that you're a lot more likely to be negatively affected by the munchies in regard to fat loss if you're a light smoker that only occasionally smokes in comparison to a heavy smoker that smokes all the time. I know that may not make sense, but studies that look at chronic marijuana users show a negative correlation between body weight and the amount of marijuana someone smokes. 
In other words, the more excess weight that someone carries, the less likely they are to use marijuana. And a survey of about 50,000 people confirmed these results. Even after adjusting for factors like age, sex, and tobacco use, people using marijuana at least three times per week were 40% less likely to be obese. This is probably because with acute marijuana use or using it every now and then, it can be more likely to increase your appetite and lead to a binge because you're not used to the drug's effects on your appetite. Meanwhile, chronic use could lead to a higher degree of tolerance to the THC, which reduces the effect on the appetite. Couple that with the fact that marijuana use increases your heart rate and you'll see why chronic use may actually reduce body weight rather than increase it. Of course, a lot of this does depend on the individual too. There are rumors that some very lean bodybuilders are able to use marijuana without being crippled by the munchies. Bodybuilding competitors are really only able to use a substance like marijuana to unwind since it's calorie free unlike alcohol, and clearly some of them are able to control their appetite. Meanwhile others are simply not. So munchies more than likely affect people on a person by person basis. Some people can control it while others will binge. So with all that said, as of now, it doesn't seem that we can conclusively say that marijuana will prevent or slow muscle growth and if it helps you increase your appetite and take in the amount of calories you need to bulk up, then it may even help you build muscle. Meanwhile, if you're trying to burn fat, you don't smoke that often, and you can't resist the munchies when you do smoke, you may be better off staying away from it entirely. That about wraps it up, guys. I really hope that you enjoyed this video and that you now understand how marijuana affects performance, muscle growth, and fat loss at least a little better. Remember to subscribe to the channel and hit that bell icon. And also, if you're looking for a done-for-you program that'll help you develop your muscles in your body, Body, like your chest, back, shoulders, and legs while helping you burn fat without having to eat the same bland, boring foods all day long. And you want to do that without having to go through all the grueling trial and error that's typically associated with reaching your goals. Just visit my website where we have challenges designed to help you achieve your body transformation goals, whether that's building more muscle or burning more fat. You'll get a customizable meal plan that'll change as your metabolism adapts and changes throughout the entire program. We also offer many options, including intermittent fasting, keto, one meal a day, carb cycling, vegan, vegetarian, and much, much more. You'll also get a full workout plan with a full video exercise library so you're never left confused, as well as a recipe book that goes hand in hand with your particular meal plan. And you'll get an accountability coach that'll be there to guide you through the entire process, as well as much more. To find out more, you can click the link below in the description, or you can visit my website directly at gravitytransformation.com.